Hello, my friend. Welcome to live chat. Yes. I like talking about the internet because I did not have the internet when I was growing up. I did not know that the internet would create so many jobs <laughs> and so many jobs that make so much freaking money, like so much money, like more money than I could ever spend. Some people make a lot. So I wanted to talk about that today because I'm absolutely fascinated by how people create things from nothing and end up making millions and millions of dollars. Now, some of the people we're going to be talking about today from the Forbes list that just came out are beauty creators, and some of them are not. We're going to go over the top 10 and kind of talk about the general theme because I see one thing that all of these people are doing that is pushing them into the top 10. We're going to talk about that one major thing and how each person is doing it briefly. And then I also have in the top 40, there's a bunch of uh, beauty creators that I wanted to talk about. One, two, three, four, five, six more beauty creators that are in the top 40 that I wanted to mention. Uh, and I'm, I'm just fascinated by this. <laughs> I really am. So I'm going to talk about it. Um, we are having a little bit of an issue with um, with loading. Uh, the streaming platform is being weird or my computer is being weird or both. Not quite sure. So I'm not sure if I'm going to have photos for you today. But the article that I'm referencing is going to be in uh, linked in the video description. So you can go over and you can check it out as well. But before we say all of the things, we're going to start with number 10. We're going to work to number one before we get there. Let's go ahead and say hello to the people that are here live in the collective brain of Makeup Awesomeness, where we help each other not to buy crap, and we also talk about things that are happening, and they really help this chat to be amazing. Uh, they help bring it to the next level. I couldn't do as good of a chat without the people that are here live, but if you're not able to make it here live, you are also very important because you are going to be participating in the comment section down below and continuing that conversation so we can all continue learning from you because that's what this community is all about. So let's very quickly say hello to the people that are here live. All right. If I can get all the way to the top. Good morning to Tracy. Happy Sunday to you. Hello, Teresa, and the happy, happiest of birthdays to you. I'm so happy you are here. Thank you for being here. You are amazing. Uh, happy birthday. I hope you have a wonderful day. Tish, good morning to you. Looking forward to learning how I can get rich. Well, you know, we can know, this is the thing, is we can know how, like you could know all the steps, but still not be able to do it. <laughs> And that's one thing we're going to talk about today is it's more than just understanding how they're doing it. It's capturing the magic that they've been able to capture. And we'll get into that in just a minute because I have not been able to capture the magic, not at this level, at least at a level, but not this level. It would be great to be able to capture it at this level, but let's talk about it. We'll get there. Kim, hello. Good. Uh, happy Sunday to you. Hi, nice Gigi. Good morning in Minnesota. Hi, Andrea. Good to see you. Looking forward to chat today too. Me too. Jody, good morning to you. Hi, everyone. Got my cup of tea. Ready for Sunday chat after a manic weekend. Oh my goodness. Busy, busy, busy. Busy weekend for me too. This is like the end of the busy weekend. I get to kind of sit and relax and hang out with you guys. Makes me so happy. Sherry, good morning to you. Good morning to Jen, John, the mods and the collective brain. Happy Sunday on this beautiful crisp morning from Port Hope, Simpson, Labrador, Canada. It is rainy and humid here. It is so humid. Like I feel like I'm on a tropical island. It is so humid in my house. <laughs> Hence the frizz that is happening. If I did not say good morning to you, good morning to you. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, yes, this is a Beetlejuice shirt. It is from the musical. We went, we got to go to Broadway uh, for Phoenix's 14th birthday, and we got to see this. This was their big birthday present. So, yeah, um, this is my Beetlejuice shirt. It was very overpriced, but I still love it. That's what you expect when you go to concerts and show every, shows. Everything's overpriced. All right. So we're going to spend a little less time on the people that are not beauty related, but I do want to mention them. Like I said, I had all of the photos captured of everybody, but they're just not uploading. Right now, I I was able to upload two of the photos, and it's just it's extremely frustrating. So just go over to the Forbes article; it's linked down below if you want to follow along. So number uh, number ten, and I don't understand how Forbes does this because number ten has the second amount of most money. 
uh, according to Forbes. So I don't understand why he's number 10 when nine, nine through two have less money listed next to their names. I don't get it. Maybe, oh, nine uploaded. So let's go to number eight. Let's see if I can get everybody on here. So number 10, I do have his photo uploaded. Uh, not my favorite person on the planet, uh, Jake Paul. Uh, $45 million. And he has built his social media platform at this point on boxing. Um, subscription streams, uh, his subscriptions are, he makes so much money off of subscriptions to his live streams because you just never know what he's going to say. Uh, and he doesn't seem to care if he hurts anybody or if he offends anybody or whatever. Uh, he has a lot of merch. Uh, he does a lot of advertising. Um, you know, I think that there's two types of, of people that that are successful on social media. They're the, the extremely likable people that are put up on a pedestal that seem to never make any mistakes. And then there's the people that are unlikable, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. People that are just, um, they don't seem like good people, but they show that they don't care whether you care if they're good people or not. And then they, um, they make money off of that, off of their IDGAF attitude. And it's very interesting because I see Jake Paul and some of these other people as that, um, you know, it's that, that confidence, I guess. Uh, also he, he's, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to think like, is he quick witted? Is he likable in any way personality wise, besides the fact that he just doesn't care what anybody thinks? I don't, I don't know. I don't follow him enough to know. <laughs> <laughs> but he's doing extremely well. And that's something you cannot deny whether you like someone or not. Uh, you cannot deny that he's doing very, very well. Um, yeah. Shemeca, yeah, he is vile. He is. And he's, nice, Gigi. He's gross. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Jake Paul gives me the ick. Yeah, me too. Um, but he's he's doing very, very well. It's not stopping him. Um, and I think that's where you can correct me if you if you think that you're if you have a different opinion. But, you know, we talk about cancel culture all the time and how, you know, we don't want to support people that are just trash people. They just seem like they're awful people. But then you see people like Jake Paul and some of the other people and you're like, how, you know, people are still continually supporting them. Um you know, it is what it is. You know, there's people like people have a right to, to, to use their money however they see fit. I'm a full believer in that. Um, but cancel culture has not gotten Jake Paul, not gotten Jake Paul. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, somebody that seems much more likable, but I don't know her very well to be a hundred percent with you. And it's Addison Ray uh, at number nine. She has $8.5 million. And this is just from, um, why is it not showing? I clicked it and it's not showing picture is not showing. That's making me very upset. Um, that was one that was having trouble loading was Addison Ray. So mostly she grew on TikTok. Uh, and now she has had partnerships with Pandora, Vital Proteins, American Eagle. She had a multi-million dollar Netflix deal. And of course, Item Beauty, which where uh, a lot of us are familiar with. I actually really like Item Beauty, the products. Uh, they were parent comp. I think the parent company is the same parent company that owns Ipsy. They kind of helped her get it off the ground from my understanding. Um, and I honestly really like the products I've tried so far. I'm, I was shocked. I didn't think I would like them. Uh, products that were made by Ipsy on their own were straight trash. They sent me the um, the Tetris collection. It was awful. Uh, so I expected the, the item beauty line to be awful. And it's just not. <laughs> it's just not awful. I love the concealer. That's probably my favorite thing from the line. Um, you know, we're, we're going to, let's hold, well, yeah, let's talk about it. So, so far, I'm just going to tell you the main thing that all these people have in common is that they built their social media following to a strong degree. Oh, why is it? Sh it's not showing on my end. Thank you. It was not showing that the photo even went up. Thank you, husband, for telling me it was up because on my end, it's not up. <laughs> yeah, that's Addison Ray. Yeah, sorry about that. It wasn't showing up on my end. Um, so so what they what they all have in common is they built their social media following to a strong degree. And then they went off the internet and they started making money doing other things. Um, with Addison Ray, of course, it's the item beauty. It's the Netflix deal. Uh, with Jake Paul, it's, you know, he's still mostly on the internet. You know, he does the subscription streams and boxing is, you know, on television even now. I think I'm pretty sure some of his boxing matches have been on television. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, but 
a lot of these people are not just doing something on TikTok, not just doing something on YouTube, not just doing something on Instagram. They've brought their platforms off of there and are selling things or working with brands off of that. Um, so, but they all started <laughs> and built a loyal following of people who are willing to buy their stuff, I think is what it comes down to, uh, with a lot of these people. And let's see the, the trend continue. Actually, before we do that, let's see what everybody's saying. Now that we have someone that's a little more likable. Thank you guys for telling me the pick was still up. <laughs> I appreciate you. Yay. You can see me now. Oh, I'm so glad. Melissa says, I've gotten many different products from Item Beauty, including the concealer, and I really like their products. Me too. Me too. I know, right? Okay, pay-per-view matches, which I'm sure is obnoxiously priced. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Oh, I didn't realize that. She's tied to the Kardashian. Chris knows how to manage. I didn't realize Addison Rae was tied to the Kardashians. That's interesting. I had no idea. Uh, Tish says, I find the TikTok stars to be a weird phenomenon. Yeah. I mean, I, we talked about this last week a little bit with Samantha Ravindahl's video that went out last week about how it's hard to get attached to people on TikTok because the videos are so fast and you don't necessarily get most of your, unless you go over specifically to your subscription feed, you get mostly videos of people that you don't follow. So it's interesting how people that get their start on TikTok, people be, do, some people do become attached to those people. So, so yeah. Um, Edgy loves makeup. Henny says, I don't, I don't know her, but I think she has a fast and blessed career. She definitely has. I mean, she's been, she's been around for a little while. I feel like, uh, when do you think Addison Ray hit the scene? Maybe 2019, 2018. I don't have that, uh, down. It might be in the Forbes article. I'm not sure, but, uh, she's definitely on the up and up and she's number nine. So let's move on to the next one. Um, these next few are not makeup related until we get to number six. So let's, uh, this person I'm not familiar with. This is Kabi Lame, uh, 10 million followers. He's the most followed TikToker in the world. He passed Charlie D'Amelio in June. He does comedy life hacks without talking. Uh, he's now the face of web three, which I, I'm not quite sure hundred percent what that is. He has a deal with a cryptocurrency exchange called Binance. He has partnerships with the soccer club PSG. And he also does uh, advertising with Hugo Boss Fashion. Mm -hmm. And it just amazes me that he was able to grow a TikTok following. I've never seen, to my knowledge, any of his TikTok videos. I might have. Uh, you think I've seen him? Okay. I thought he, it says he doesn't talk though. We've seen him. Okay. There's no way you haven't seen him. Okay. I'll have to look him up. Okay. John, John says I must have seen him. Uh, I probably have and just don't recognize him from the photo. But um, but yeah, just from just being funny and not talking, like how amazing is that? He's at $10 million. Uh, absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, number seven is somebody that I'm very familiar with, but not beauty related. We have Rhett and Link. Uh, who started on YouTube many moons ago. I remember playing some um, good mythical, screened good mythical mornings for my students when I taught in a trailer. <laughs> I taught fourth grade in a trailer. And uh, at, at dismissal time, we would put on good mythical morning because uh, the kids absolutely loved it. Of course, I watched them first to make sure they were appropriate. But uh, $30 million uh, merch. They did a festival. They have solo show appearances, music sales, and endorsements. Uh, and you can see it's that diversifying the income. It's diversifying the income. It's going off of social and it is, you know, making, making your money in many different places. You notice that none of these people say they're making it off the advertising off of the platform. None of these people are like, they made so much in AdSense. They made so much in off TikTok. They made so much off of Instagram. No, they're not making it off of the ad platforms off of just the socials. They're going off of socials. They're getting brand deals um, that are paying them so, so much more. And number six is not loading. Hopefully it'll load. Uh, so let's see what y'all are saying while number six loads, because this is a beauty person, number six. Yeah, Holly loves Good Mythical Morning. I, you know, I haven't watched it in so long, but when I used to watch it, I really did enjoy it. Do you ever find that where there's like a series or something that you actually really, really like, but you stop watching it for some reason and you don't really know why you stopped watching it? Um, that's the way I feel about Good Mythical Morning. I feel like that about um, Philip DeFranco's new show too. I was watching that religiously every single day and then all of a sudden I just stopped watching it and I have no idea why. <laughs> it's, it's really good. I don't know. Uh, Crystal says, love Good Mythical Morning. I just met Nicole at the Killers concert a couple of weeks ago. She was lovely, wonderful. Uh, 
Christy says Good Mythical Morning is great. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's very funny. It's enjoyable. I think maybe they just do things that are just so weird sometimes that it's just a little bit of a stretch for me. I don't know. <laughs> Dark Angel says, I don't have TikTok. Never heard of most of these people. It's it's incredible that somebody can be this famous and have people never have heard of them. Like they're like I was saying about um about Kabi Lame. I I don't recognize him off of like if he was moving, I would probably recognize him. I think that's what it is. Uh, number six is still uploading. It's being a jerk, uh, but we'll we'll tell you who number six is, and her name is Huda Katan. And Huda Katan is at thirteen million dollars for the year. Maybe because these are for the year. Most of these are based in income from twenty twenty one. Um, so maybe maybe it's kind of like an overall like the numbers they're showing are just from the year maybe. And it's not like their overall value. And maybe that's how they get the ranking. I don't know. Um, but Huda Katan, of course, Huda Beauty is doing amazing. It is a worldwide brand. Uh, I think that's what really makes Huda Beauty stand out among other brands is that they really focus on being in many, many, many countries. And they're very popular in many countries. They create, for the most part, in my opinion, I would say 85 percent of the things I've tried from Huda Beauty I've liked. Uh, they are consistently, for me, that's pretty consistent. Uh, there's very few brands that I would say I've liked everything. Uh, if I liked everything, I probably haven't tried enough is what it comes down to. Um, she just makes really good quality products. It says that Huda Beauty reached a net worth of 400 million. Oh no, she has a wet net worth of $400 million and she's one of the richest self-made women in the world. And Huda Katan has had her own scandals. Um, you know, I know she was very heavily criticized for some of her hacks, some of her makeup hacks, uh, being dangerous, uh, being potential, well, potentially dangerous. And people were saying, you know, you're getting these kids to try these makeup hacks that could hurt them, um, could hurt your skin, could be damaging. And, you know, she's doing amazing. She's doing amazing. I, I don't know. I'm putting my, going my, my hair like this because it's so frizzy. Um, I don't know as far as how much content Huda Katan is putting out at this point. Uh, I'm not on Instagram a whole lot, but I, I know I haven't seen her much on like YouTube. So I really, it feels like, you know, she built her base with her beauty channel on YouTube with her Instagram. And now she's just build, building this empire, mostly based on Huda Beauty. And she's crushing it. She's absolutely crushing it. Tomorrow is a new day. Thank you so much for becoming a member of the Collective Brain Elite. I appreciate you oh so very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, Mons loves Huda Beauty. Uh, Amara says, I'm surprised Huda is that low down. She's rich, rich. Well, that's, I guess the people above her are more rich, rich than she is. Uh, I think that she's the highest beauty person, sort of. Yeah. I would say she's the highest beauty person. So if you want to put it that way, she is, she's the number one person that I would consider someone that's mostly beauty. So there you go. I do love Mama Tot on TikTok. I do like her very much. She's wonderful. Holly says, I need to try Huda Beauty eyeshadow palettes. I love her lip products. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the, the what is it? The Rose Quartz palette, I use that thing all the time. And it's very rare I use an eyeshadow palette as often as I use that palette. It's just, just it's so easy to use. The last palette I used that much was the ABH Sultry palette. Um, it's, it's a fantastic eyeshadow palette if you like pinks. Eddie Loves Makeup Henry says the new concealer uh, is bomb. So good. Good to know. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I am Finley says, when I think of celebrities, I think of movies, TVs, and TV and musicians, TikTok and social media never comes to mind. I don't know how many times I say who when someone mentions a famous TikToker. Yeah. And I think that um, it's, I guess, because because of the internet, I think we're realizing just practically in our minds how many people there are on the planet. 
And it's like when you when you have TV and movies, it's curated. Um, you you have to go through channels in order to become famous. And you have publicity people that help you become more famous. Uh, and you have different things like the Oscars and um, award shows and, and television interviews on The View. And, you know, you have all these things that make you, I think, the appearance of being more famous because you're more visible, you're in more places. But when it comes down to it, some of these people are more well known than celebrities that if you think about number of people, then some celebrities that are in movies and television shows and things. It's fascinating to me. It's absolutely fascinating. I mean, who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? So uh, Mama Tot, uh, her name is, oh, it's a very unique name. I'm trying to remember what her name is, but she's just a lovely human on TikTok. If you type in Mama Tot on TikTok, you'll find her. Uh, oh, I can't remember her name, but it's it's a very unique name. I know y'all will, um, will tell me what her name is. Um, but she's lovely. She's just, she's just good vibes only good vibes only. All right. Let's zip through number five through one, uh, because none of the rest of them are really beauty people. Um, and number hood and never went through. So let's see if I can get the next one to go through. I don't know if it's going to, all right. Yes, it did. Yay. All right. Emma, Emma Chamberlain, $12 million. She has the highest engagement rate in the top 10. 12% of her Instagram audience engages with her con uh, her content, which seems doesn't seem like a lot, 12%. But when you have millions and millions and millions of followers, 12% is a lot. It 12% is very good of engagement. I mean, fantastic, uh, especially with that high of a number. Uh, her audience is just very, uh, they really follow her. They're very, very loyal. She was a high school dropout, which I did not know. Um, it seems like she's mostly grown because of her personality, because she's just extremely likable, uh, according to Forbes. Uh, she also owns Chamberlain Coffee. She has a bunch of merch. She had a deal with Louis Vuitton, uh, and that's how she is so rich. <laughs> uh, next up, let's see if we can get this one to load. Come on, come on, come on. Let's see what y'all are saying. I don't know much about Emma Chamberlain. I need to to get tune into em, um to tune into Emma Chamberlain because I've heard good things about her for a very long time, and I I don't think I've ever watched a single thing like you were just talking about a single. I don't think I've ever watched a th single thing that Emma Ch Emma Chamberlain has ever created. Yeah, Ophelia, thank you so much, Ophelia. I knew it was a unique name. Thank you so much, you guys. For I knew you'd know. I knew you'd know. Uh, Amara says, I love Emma Chamberlain. I'm nearly 30, but she's my girl crush and I want to be her when I grow up. See, I need to find the joy of Ember, Emma Chamberlain. All right. So this one I found interesting because I'd never heard of the person, but I heard of the thing that he created, which I think is key. When you can get beyond your core audience and start selling things to people that have never heard of you, then, then you've won. You've won. That's, that's how you've won the internet. Uh, and this person, his name is Elliot Tabell, and his name is uh, F. Jerry, F U C K Jerry. Uh, he has two, uh, he's listed as $20.1 million, and he's made his money off of making memes. Yes, you heard me right, making memes. He created the card game, What Do You Meme? So if you've ever seen that card game at your local Target on the toy shelf or whatever, uh, he created that. And it is currently Amazon's 17th most popular game. It says board game, but it's a card game, I believe. What do you mean is a card game, isn't it? Uh, and he also owns a tequila company. So, you know, I think that's incredible. You know, I, I do. I think that's absolutely incredible to make that much money off of memes. Just, are you serious? Are you serious right now? Unbelievable. Um, but one thing that is not unbelievable is the next person and how she's made her money. She's made her money off of talking about sex. And we all know that sex sells, um, you know, so that's how she made her money. $20 million. Oop, wrong person. Not that person. Where'd she go? I thought she had loaded, but she did not load. She had an error. Her name is Alexandra Cooper, $20 million. Uh, she was a former college soccer player. She has a podcast called Call Her Daddy. Uh, it's a sex themed podcast. And she signed a $60 million contract to bring the podcast to Spotify exclusively. She's the number one female focused podcast on Spotify globally. There she is. She's gorgeous. So that's incredible to sit in front of a microphone and make $60 million selling your podcast. 
Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me? That's that's incredible. Like, what? What? That's insane. That's insane to me. Oh, Jody says, oh, that podcast has a bit of drama last year. Really? Okay. I don't know anything about that. Actually, you know what? In, in, now that you mention it, I think I remember hearing about it, but I didn't like, it wasn't one of the ones I fell down the rabbit hole. It was like I scrolled something on Twitter and people said the thing and then I was like, oh, okay. Mm. I wasn't interested. So I never went down the rabbit hole to find out uh, what happened there. Crystal says, I've heard of the podcast, but I didn't know her name. Yeah. I don't know. I know it said in the Forbes article that she separated from her original partner, uh, but I don't know. I don't know about that. All right. Uh, we're going to zip through the last two because I want to get more to beauty people. Oh, Shamika says, yeah, I heard about the, uh, I heard about the drama with her. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, hmm. And Amara doesn't get it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Number two, I'm sure most of you have heard of this person which is not going to be a shock. You've probably heard of the last two. If you've never heard of the other of, of the rest of the people, you've probably heard of the last two. Especially if you've been in the beauty space, you've probably heard of number two. And she's a lovely young lady named Charlie D'Amelio. Um, she is at $17.5 million. And a lot of that is from uh, her being having her clothing brand with Hollister and her sister. She has the Hulu show. Uh, she also has a bunch of brand deals. And now we talked about this in What's Up in Makeup today, that she has started D'Amelio Brands with her sister and her father. Her father is going to be running it. And uh, she, this is, this is, this is nuts to me. If you know anything about business, this is, this is absolutely, even if you know nothing about business, this is nuts. D'Amelio Brands has zero products, zero products. They have zero of everything, nothing. They, uh, they have no money. They've made no, they've made zero dollars. They have zero, zero employees and they have a valuation of a hundred million dollars. <laughs> a valuation of a hundred million dollars and they have nothing. They've created nothing. They've made nothing. They have no employees. <laughs> that just blows me away. That blows my mind. And number one is not going to be a shock if you if you know internet culture. Mr. Beast is number one at fifty four million dollars. Um, and it said, which I found fascinating, that he made most of his money from the ads, the sponsored content on YouTube, the ads on YouTube. So he gets so many views, so many views, and he does sponsored content. He makes most of his money from there which blows my mind, blows my mind. They also mentioned Mr. Beast Burger, which fascinates me. Mr. Beast Burger has no physical locations. It's a ghost kitchen. Uh, they have other kitchens learn how to make the food and then they make the food and then they have, you know, DoorDash or whatever delivers it to you. Just, uh, we ordered it once. It was pretty good. It's fast food. It was pretty good. It was decent. <laughs> And number two still didn't upload. Okay, so we are at the halfway mark. And then we're going to really focus on these six people uh, because they're all beauty creators and I want to talk about them. But before we do, let's talk about what is on my face today. So on my eyes today, I am still playing with the Alice in Wonderland palette that was sent to me by Sigma. Um, I have to say formula wise, so far, this is not my favorite. And I hate, because y'all know how much I died over this palette. It is gorgeous. But I'm having, oh, here's Charlie. Charlie finally loaded. There she is. She's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous lady. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with some of the shades lasting all day, which is weird for a Sigma palette. Um, I'm also having a little bit of trouble with some fallout, especially with the green here. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad palette by any means, um, but I don't think this is going to be formula-wise my favorite Sigma palette, which shocks me. <laughs> it's still really good. I mean, I'm wearing it today. I have the pink over here and I have this uh, shade in the inner corner and then on my lower lash line I used Wonderland to give that little tiny pop of green and it, and I also used um, 10 6 which applies beautifully this this applies absolutely gorgeous uh, this one is a little more difficult this curiouser shade it's a little more difficult to blend it took a little more elbow grease um, but it's still a good shade I really really loved using the shade twinning 
Um, it's a good palette, but it's not, it's not my favorite. I do love the color story though. I love the color, color story. Uh, as far as Sigma palettes, I would say this is middle of the road to a little, to a little higher. Um, but definitely not my favorite, unfortunately, which makes me so sad. It's a good palette though. It's good. If you still, if you like the color story, I would say still get it. But, um, formula wise, it's just not my favorite. I'm sad about that. Um, okay. So next up we have, uh, cheeks and I broke this out. I hadn't used this in a long time. This is the cover will clean fresh cream blush. And this was sent to me in PR quite a long time ago and it worked beautifully. Uh, when I got this, I wasn't super into cream blushes, so I didn't use it a whole lot, but worked out great on my lips today. This is a relatively new purchase. This is the Maybelline super stay vinyl ink. And this is in the shade 40, which is called witty. And that's what's on my lips today. And then I top that with an almost nearly matching shade from the Alice in Wonderland collection from Sigma. This is a lovely lip gloss. And this is in the shade Kiss the Tulips. And it's gorgeous, darling. Absolutely gorgeous. So uh, that is what is on my face today. And let us move. Hopefully these will load to the second half. Let me just uh, see what everybody is saying. Nyla says, Gem Physicians Formula makes shade adjuster drops for foundation. Thank you so much for that because you know I'm looking for new ones. Just an FYI, since you mentioned last week that you need to deepen your foundations. Yes, I have so many foundations that are way too light. Way too light. Today, I got a little out of control with the deepening drops. My skin is slightly darker than it should be, and it's bothering me. <laughs> slightly darker. You may not be able to tell. Well, no, I mean, it matches my... It just slightly. You Can you see the difference? Just slightly darker, and I don't like it. I, I, I went a little... A little out of control, but I was rushing and I couldn't redo it. So, um, regarding Mr. B, Mr. B's crystal says, I'm sure he'll have an impossible burger soon. Lots of money made in the veggie, in the, uh, veggie market. Yeah. In the vegan market. Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. <laughs> Misty says impossible burgers are gross to me. I don't want to eat anything that's supposed to taste like meat. You know, I did. We, my kid, uh, Phoenix ordered, uh, an impossible burger once and they liked it. I don't know if I tasted it. I don't know. Yeah, did you like it? They're okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they have their own issues. Okay. Like, that, that's a whole, that's a whole can of worms. Yeah, they have their own issues. Well, you you don't you don't particularly like like soy based products and stuff for your nutrition choices, so it's probably a big part of it, but. Yeah, Siri says there seem to be some problems with formulas across the market at the moment. I can only surmise that delivery chain problems are having an effect on brands opting to go ahead with substitutes. Yeah, definitely possible. I mean, it's definitely not a bad formula by any means. It's just, you know how much I love Sigma's formula. And I just don't love this one. I like it, but I just don't love it as much as I used to like it. So, oh, Pharaoh says, your mic looks like I has cute little eyes looking back at us. This is Jabberwocky. Jabberwocky is my friend. I know. I want to put little, yeah, like little, next time I go to Michael's, I'm going to Michael's on, on Monday. I should get little googly eyes for Jabberwocky. We could just put them on the, on the little buttons up here. That'd be awesome. Love that. I, they make googly eyes that are this size. It'd be great. Oh, Casey says, uh, OMG, me too. I'm almost out of my cover effects. I need a good replacement. Good to know about Physicians Formula. Yeah, thank you so much. Collective brain for the win. All right, let's go on to the second half and let's talk about the lovely Patrick Starr. Patrick Starr's at number 14 with $15 million. Uh, and they're saying that most of his money is coming from brand deals and from one size. Uh, I didn't realize one size was doing that well. Congratulations to Patrick. Um, one size's products have been very hit and miss for me. I have honestly not enjoyed most of them. Uh, my favorite thing, strangely enough, has been the eyeshadow palette that I got in FabFitFun, which was a sponsored video. I was shocked how much I liked his eyeshadow shadow formula. It was so good. And it is so good. I don't know why I'm talking about it in the past tense. I guess because I haven't used it in a while. Um, it's a fantastic eyeshadow formula. It's wonderful. It goes on easily. It works great. I mean, him being a makeup artist, he knows a good formula. Um, but I like, I did not like the makeup removal products when those, those were the first things that launched. I did not like those at all. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've tried from the brand. I know there's been other things, but in my mind, I feel like it's a very hit and miss brand, uh, but I also don't feel like I've tried enough products in order to have like a full opinion, a full valid opinion of the brand as a whole. Um, but I, I think that's fantastic. Um, good for him. I think that's awesome. Have you all tried one size and what do you think so far? Uh, Beatrice says, I like the one size BB cream. Great to know. 
Casey says the one side blushes and bronzers are amazing. I was truly shocked. They look really pretty. They do. I like the way they look in them in the pans. They're pigmented, excuse me, they're pigmented AF. So I use a light hand, but they are fire. Fantastic. That's great. Oh my goodness. There's so many of these, um, dark, these drop foundation mixers. Dark angel says Nix has some, uh, Fatina says LA girl. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate that because I'm notorious for getting my foundation way too light. All right, let's move on to number 15, which is still uploading. And that is Ms. Desi Perkins, uh, creating her eyewear company, Desi and Desi skin. She is at $12 million. Wow. It's interesting because if you think about the people that are the highest up in the beauty space, you know, we have Huda, we have Patrick, and we have Desi. These are people that have been around since, you know, the beginning baby stages of beauty YouTube. And I think that's amazing that they are still doing so, so well. Absolutely. So, so well. So, so well. Um, one person I was surprised to see. And I don't want to upset anybody. So I was surprised that I did not see Jeffree Star in the top 40. Um, was very surprised. I don't know if he's on the list somewhere and I just missed it, but I was very surprised um, because he does still get a ton of, um, he gets a ton of views on his YouTube videos still. I looked up um, the other day because I was curious. I was looking at a different list that I didn't think was as accurate that mentioned Jeffree Star as being one of the top uh, paid creators. It was like, a, it was mostly based on followers. And I feel like the Forbes one is based on reality <laughs> where the other one was more based on followers. And Jeffree Star was on there. And I was like, does he even still get views anymore? And he does. He still gets mostly over a million views on his videos. Um, he's got his yak farm. He's still putting out products. Um, does he still post regular videos? He posts, I think I notice he posts like maybe a couple times a month. Um, you know, but I was I was surprised to not see him on there. I, I've heard that people are not buying his products as much, uh, his beauty products as much. Uh, I know that I don't know anybody in my circle that has bought a Jeffree Star product since the whole thing blew up um with with uh all the stuff with Tati and all that. I don't I don't know anybody in my circle that's bought anything. <laughs> <laughs> including myself. So the, maybe that's, that's a, a part of it. I mean, like you, but I was, I, I mean, it just goes to show that cancel culture, I think does, does work sometimes when you have a trash human being. And that's just my opinion when it comes to Jeffree Star. I don't think that he's a good person. I don't think that he's ever going to be a good person. I think that's just part of who he is and he has a right to be who he wants to be. But, um, you know, I, I will not be, watching or buying or any of those things. I'm not even curious about the yak meat. If I want yak meat, I'm sure I can find it somewhere else <laughs> if I want to try that particular food. So, you know, um, but yeah, Crystal says, I don't think his brand is doing as well as it once did. Yeah. I don't think it is either. I don't, I don't think so. I think that he just really, um, he became so unlikable so unlikable to so many people that it's like Jake Paul somehow, is able to turn his unlikability into fans, but I think that that Jeffrey's just so unlikable at this point by so many people. It's because Jake Paul fights. It's oh, okay. John says it's because Jake Paul fights, and yeah. you're supposed to trash talk when you're a fighter. You're supposed to be a jerk. Yeah. Um, people want to tune in to see him get humbled. People want. Oh, people want to tune in to see him get humbled. That makes sense. That's what I think. That makes sense. Hey, Missy, so good to see you. Um. But yeah, I was just, I, this just came into my mind. It just popped in and I figured I would mention it. I, I did see Desi Perkins in a coffee shop once. She seemed like a nice person, <laughs> but I never spoke to her. So I don't know. Um, I met Patrick once. Patrick, uh, Patrick Starr was, was very, um, very unreachable, very on, uh, I talked, I did talk to him. He was very, um, He's, he seemed like somebody that, that wouldn't talk to somebody he didn't know that he didn't think was, was famous or popular. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. But this was many, many years ago. I don't know whether things have changed since then. Uh, but but yeah, not a great interaction with Patrick Starr when I met him many years ago. I mean, this is probably 2017. So uh, Desi, I didn't get to talk to. Uh, Bretman Rock seems like a lovely person. He's the next one we're going to talk about. Oh, Desi's picture finally popped up. She's gorgeous. What a beautiful, beautiful woman. All right. Let's talk about Bretman Rock. Bretman Rock seems like a lovely human. <laughs> he really does. He's so likable. Um, you know, he's one of those that I feel like just has never 
in my in my circle of social media, I've never seen him do anything to truly cause any kind of controversy. Uh, he's hilarious and he's talented. And he's so incredibly likable. He is at $6.1 million. He had an MTV series. He was the face of Nike's Be True Pride campaign in 2021. And he's crushing it. He's absolutely crushing it. I freaking love Bretman Rock. I do. I love him. I, I, I adore him. Let's focus on Bretman because he's amazing. I think he's awesome. Yeah, Tracy says, Patrick Starr seems like he would be shy in public. He was not that day. He was definitely not shy that day. He walked into the room like he was just king of the world, chin high, cameras flashing. Like, I mean, but, pe but to, be, to be real though, people, the influencers in the room were stunned by him. People were jaws on the floor. It was like a celebrity had walked in. And he had the air of a celebrity walking in and people treated him like a celebrity. So take that as it will. But he, there was definitely did not seem like there was any shyness there, at least that I saw. If he is shy, I did not see that. He played it off really, really well. <laughs> Amara says, I like Bretman. That guy just wants to live his best life. I know, right? I know, right? Yeah, Brenda Lee says, the car accident might have changed uh, Jeffrey's outlook and attitude too. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, Diana, I feel the same way going back to Jeffree Star. In my opinion, there's absolutely no excuse for purchasing his products. There's so many brands out there. Why well, continue to have to defend your purchases for who? What pe what are people gaining? Exactly. And when I did purchase his products back, you know, a while ago, I still regret it. Um I, I enjoyed the eyeshadow formula, but not enough. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like it's anything that's like so magical. You can't get it anywhere else. Like, honestly, I love hip dots formula. I feel like hip dots formula is better than that. And hip dot is way cheaper and way cooler in my opinion. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I remember that Heidi. Heidi says the way Patrick Starr acted after the controversy of Rare Beauty after his negative review was embarrassing. Selena Gomez was classy and told everyone to stop sending hate. Rare Beauty is a class act. Selena Gomez is another one that seems to thrive off of being an angelic human. <laughs> She's like, no, with the halo. 100%, 100%. Um, okay, so talk about the next one. I'm not as familiar with this person. So you'll have to tell me what you think. And I did not click to upload her picture yet. So hopefully it loads quickly. This is, and please, please tell me if I say this wrong, because I don't want to say it wrong. Camilla Coelho. I think I said it correctly. Camilla Coelho is at $2.5 million, uh, selling her own namesake brand of dresses with Revolve and her beauty brand, Ella Luz. And together they have more than $10 million in sales. There she is. Gorgeous lady. Um, I, I'm not real familiar with her, so I don't really know like her social media pres presence and what she's been able to accomplish and all of those things. I have heard of Ella Luz, of course, because of, you know, what's up in makeup and talking about launches. Uh, I haven't tried any of the products, don't know anything about them. They look lovely. Packaging's gorgeous. Um, but I don't know much about, um, Camilla. Don't know much about her. Lisa says, what a gorgeous person, Bretman Rock. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Dark Angel says the same thing. I've never heard anything good about Patrick Starr. Plus, I still remember there was controversy when he reviewed Rare Beauty. I will say about Patrick Starr is I love his persona online. When he used to do like the videos, um, the drag videos where he dressed up. I remember he did one with Laura Lee. And um, in his videos, I feel like his personality comes off as so likable. Um, I just didn't experience that in person. Um, but maybe, again, it was so many years ago. It was so many years ago. And I, I, it was just that one experience. So it's like, I don't feel like it's fair to judge a whole human on one, you know, on being in a room with someone for a couple of hours many years ago. You know what I'm saying? Um, Beatrice says she's gorgeous. She's from Brazil. Every, you know what? Every person I've ever met from Brazil has been wonderful. Like lovely, lovely, lovely people. Every person that I've ever met from Brazil. I'm sure there's some terrible people in Brazil, but I've never met one. <laughs> There's terrible people in every country, but I've literally never met a mean person from Brazil. Everybody's fantastic. 
Yeah, Tina says, I love Selena Gomez. She seems so down to earth. She really does. She really does. Like, I want to be her best friend. Never going to happen, but <laughs> I would love to be her best friend. All right, we have two left and we have 15 minutes. So uh, let's see. This next one is a personal attachment. Personal attachment because this is a person I have not, I, I will be honest with you, I have not talked to Bailey Sarian in at least six months. It's been a while. Bailey is extremely busy, have not talked to her in a while. But she's she's one of my favorite people that I have ever met in person. Um, she's incredible. She's She's a lovely person and she's crushing it. She's absolutely crushing it. Believe it or not, when I met her, she had less followers than I did. <laughs> um, and I had found her through a tutorial that she did on a Kat Von D product that I was looking to recreate someone's tutorial um, for my channel as part of the demo with a review of the product. I found Bailey's video and I shouted her out. We connected and we ended up meeting up and doing a collab and uh, just a lovely, lovely person. Um you know, just very, very humble, very kind and has been. Um, she's, she's definitely not perfect. And I like that about her. I like that she's not perfect. Um, she's, she's a real human and I love that about her. And when her picture loads, I will put it up there. So it says that she's uh, $9.5 million. Congratulations, Bailey. Uh, lots of brand deals. Uh, but what I found interesting is they mostly focused in the Forbes interview about brand deals. They didn't talk about that she was doing videos for Netflix's YouTube channel. They didn't talk about Dark History podcast. They didn't talk about um, all of her collabs she's done. Um, they didn't They didn't talk about a lot of the things that Bailey has done. Uh, I was. I was surprised by that. Maybe because the brand deals is like the biggest way that she earns money through Murder Mystery Makeup Monday, um, but or maybe it, maybe it's also through the podcast. I don't know, but I was surprised that Forbes didn't mention all those things. So that made me think, like, what are the things they're missing for other people as well? Because they miss so many things that Bailey's been into and been doing. Yeah, Samantha says it was amazing to see her on the Forbes list. It really was. It really was. And it's fun to be able to say, I knew her when, you know? Um, I I love it. I, I love being able to see that. Yuri says, Jen, the way you approach controversial topics is A class. I don't have any affinity to makeup, but I have watched every video in the past like four years or more because you're a beam of joy and positivity. Yuri, you know what? That means so much to me. You have absolutely no idea. Like I can't even express to you how much that means to me. Thank you. I try really hard. I am not perfect. I have definitely botched it in the past, but I, I'm always working to be better. Uh, and I try very hard to approach controversial topics well. It is, it is been a learning experience. Let's just say that. It has been a learning experience. But I, I seriously, that means so much to me. Really, really does. Marinella says, I love her dark history series, meaning Bailey, especially the one she did on the AD on the ADA. It was an amazing video I never thought I would know about. I don't, I didn't see that one. I'll have to check that out. Rose, hi Rose. Rose says Bailey's a rock star. I agree. Bubbles Hill says I love Bailey. Wear her merch every week. I still wear her merch too. I'm sad though because my tie-dye shirt is fading. Like the print on it is fading. It's making me sad. The Violet December says, I love how she made you over during the collab. You looked incredible. She really did do a fantastic job. And she did my makeup in a way that I haven't been able to do since. I'd never done it before. Haven't been able to do it since. She did a fantastic job. I looked hot. <laughs> and what was funny is about that collab was that we had um, we were doing a road trip across the country. Let me see if Bailey's come up. Nope, it's still uploading. Oh, there she is. There she is, my gorgeous friend. Even though I haven't talked to her in six months, I would still consider her a friend. <laughs> Because if I ever needed, really needed anything, Bailey, Bailey would be there for me. I know she would be. Um, but we were on our road trip across the country in, in the van that my husband built out. And the night before our collab, we slept We slept in the van. And um, we parked on the side of the street uh, about a few blocks away from the studio where Bailey and I were going to film. And uh, I got up and it was humid in California and I was having trouble with my hair and it was I, – I didn't shower that morning because we didn't, we don't have shower up in the van. <laughs> and I, it was, it was a very strange circumstance that morning, uh, to be ready to film. And I had no idea that I would be filming, filming with a legend. No idea at the time. So yeah. 
I'm just so happy for her. Uh, okay. So the last one I wanted to talk about because we are all, we have about 10 minutes left and I want to kind of do a free for all conversation at the very end. Uh, just kind of talking about all of the things. Uh, and we can talk about just making money on YouTube in general, if you want to, because I have a lot of knowledge about that. Uh, Michaela Naguera. And if you are not familiar with her, you probably are not on TikTok. Uh, that's where she gained most of her following. So $2.4 million, 13% engagement on TikTok. She is so loved over there on that platform. I know not everybody likes her. I know she there are people that really, really don't like her, but she has incredible engagement over there. $2.4 million deals with Charlotte Tilbury, L'Oreal, and CVS. She also had her collab with Clam Light Cosmetics. Crushing it over there. Absolutely crushing it. Yeah, I do. She is gorgeous. And she's so, uh, Michaela is so talented with makeup. And I think that what's made Michaela grow, in my opinion, is that she has a very unlikely personality for that space. And when you see her without makeup, with her big, with her thick accent, you don't see her as being the typical beauty star. You know, you look at people like Desi Perkins, Bretman Rock, um, you know, Bailey. They are the traditional beauties, Addison Ray, And then you see Michaela, and she just doesn't seem to fit in, you know? But then she crushes it. And I think it's that surprise factor of, holy crap. Like, you know, like she's, she's so talented. And so many people find her so incredibly likable. Um, that, that it's just, I, I think that's why I think that she catches people off guard. And I think that she seems like a regular everyday person where I feel like people like Desi Perkins can feel so unreachable because she's just kind of, she's like, she, she's just this, this epitome of perfection. And Michaela is not the epitome of perfection. She's, but she pulls it off. You know what I mean? She pulls off that personality and her talent. Um, she just seems like she's a real human that people can relate to. And I think that's what an advantage, a huge advantage that she has. Oh, about the whole accent thing, thing, real accent or not, just have not heard it since Goodwill Hunting. Yes, yes, the thick, thick Boston accent. Um, she explained the whole thing where, Mika okay, so Michaela has, if you're not familiar, Michaela has a very thick Boston accent, very, very thick. But her original YouTube video, she does not have a thick Boston accent. And what she explained, and you have the right to believe her or not, I choose to believe her, is that she was trying to minimize her accent in those videos. She was trying to pull it down because she didn't think people would like her for that thick accent. She thought it would be off-putting because she had people had told her it was off-putting in the past. So she decided that she was going to play down her accent. So now people are accusing her of not having that real, that the accent isn't real. Um, I, I do believe that it's real. Um, maybe I'm naive, I don't know, but I believe her and I believe that it's real. Casey says, I love Michaela. She's my fave current influencer. I followed her when she was at 500 followers. See, doesn't that feel kind of good when you like bet on the horse and the horse wins? You know, when you, when you start with somebody when they're real small and then they grow and you're like, I've been there since the beginning. Love that. Love that so much. Yeah, Daryl says, it's wild that I live 11 miles from the town Michaela's from. Yes, putting Massachusetts on the map, LOL. In my opinion, her accent is way thicker than people around here, a little forced. Gotcha, Daryl. Thank you for explaining that. So you think that she plays it up to be stronger? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, when it comes down to it, is I feel like, you know, whether she's playing it up a little bit or not, she, everybody, I feel like on the internet that, especially on TikTok, because you can't get to know somebody, there is, there is an element of character there. Um, you know, especially on the platforms that like, that aren't like a lot, like live chat. I'm just, I'm just sitting here talking as if you were sitting here in the room with me, but you know, when you, when you have an edited YouTube, when all you do is edited YouTube videos, edited TikTok videos, I mean, does she do live streams over on TikTok? Maybe she does. I don't know. Um, I feel like there's, there's a little bit of a, a, a character that 
just naturally develops and there's not really a whole lot you can do about it because you, when you're talking to a camera, it is unnatural, you know? So I don't know. I don't know. Am I, am I, you know, justifying? I don't know. Maybe, maybe a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. And a lot of people have criticized her about this. Michaela just over filters her phone. So I've never really given her a shot. And she's been criticized for that too, that a lot of her photos are so different than what she looks like when she is talking um, in an, like an edited video on TikTok, that her face just doesn't look the same. And some people just have zero tolerance for that. Um, I personally don't care. Uh, as long as you're not, if you're promoting a contour product, and you Photoshop it to make the contour look better than it actually is, and you're promoting a contour product, I have an issue with that because you're now misleading people into buying something that, that you know, doesn't do what you're – you're manipulating a product. You know what I'm saying? So that I have issues with. But if it's just like a regular look, I don't care. I don't care. If it makes you feel beautiful, I don't care. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to judge people. <laughs> But I understand that perspective about the over-filtering that it seems fake. And some people just have zero tolerance for that. And I totally – I get it. I get it. And I feel like in that situation, there's no right or wrong. It's just different. And like I'm finding this more and more the longer I'm on the internet. And uh, Finley and I, we've talked here and there. So I know Finley's not going to be like, well, Jen disagree with me. So therefore, you know, I'm unfollowing, you know. But – I find that people are a lot less tolerant these days of somebody having a different opinion, even if it's something as like relatively trivial as whether or not to use a makeup filter where the people use a makeup filter. You know what I mean? Like it's like people either – you either agree with somebody – people either agree with you or not. And the, the vitriol when, when somebody doesn't agree – I'm not talking about serious issues. I'm talking about like little, you know, things that on the grand scheme of things don't make – that big of a difference. Um, it's it's interesting how people expect somebody to always have the exact same opinions on them on every single topic. And if as soon as they find out that somebody doesn't have the exact opinion, then it's like, oh, that person's trash, you know? And again, not talking about serious issues. I'm talking about like little things here and there. It's 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 very interesting to see. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I'm stand corrected. Boston's 33, who obviously knows what they're talking about. Michaela doesn't have a Boston accent. It's a New Bedford accent. Look it up and you'll understand. I'm old, but she grew up on my street. <laughs> thank you very much for the very polite correction. I appreciate you. Yeah. See, this is, I understand this, Natasha. I completely understand this perspective. I'm a cosmetologist. I have no tolerance for filtered makeup photos. And I think that it's layered, you know, I think as a cosmetologist, you know, you have so much knowledge in that area that the general person just does not have. And I think that a lot of the makeup filters, um, I'm not saying this specifically for Michaela, but I think a lot of makeup filters make people feel more confident. They make people feel more beautiful, even if it's not real, because the internet is a scary place. Um, and I forget who I was talking to. I might've been talking to John about this. Um, but, you know, with bullying, like on, like when you're a kid, and you're in high school, you know, and you have a bully that's bothering you, you have choices. You can walk away. You can, you know, if it gets bad enough, you can tell an, a trusted adult. There's so many things you can do. Um, but you know who that bully is and you know, or that group of bullies, whatever it may be, you know who they are. You can see them coming. You know when it's coming and you have strategies of how to deal with it. But when you're on the internet, and you have people that are constantly attacking you for the way that you look, specifically, it really can mess you up. It can, it can destroy your mental health. And when you have a following as big as Michaela and some of these other people, and you have people constantly telling you how ugly you are, or you know your nose is too big, or your lips are too small, or you're too overweight, or whatever it may be, um, it's, it's exhausting. It's mentally and emotionally exhausting. And I can see people using filters in order to try to avoid some of that, that it's better to have the backlash of that person's too filtered than have the backlash of somebody coming up after who you really are, um, which may be somebody who has a larger nose or smaller lips, 
you know? Um, and it's, it's, it's easier to have somebody come after you for something that's not really you. And it's really sad that we're in that kind of society where people are so emboldened to try to hurt a stranger. And the difference between being in high school and dealing with a bully and being on the internet and dealing with bullies like that is that you can't avoid it. You just can't. You cannot read your comments. You can, you know, do all of these things, but it will find a way. It will find a way to you, whether it's through a DM, whether it's through an article written about you when you're really popular. Um, it will find its way to you and it will it will wreck you. So that's kind of what I see as far as the mental health aspect of the filters. And that's, I think, why I have a little, I personally have a little more tolerance for it. But again, I am not, um, I'm not judging anybody that thinks filters are, um, are bad. I could totally get it. Yeah. I mean, and I want to make sure that I'm very clear because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm not saying that small lips and big noses are bad <laughs> in the, in, in normal human things, but it's things that people will pick on somebody who's on social media for. Um, and it's really sad. It's really sad, you know? So I mean, I've got my, I've been picked on the, on for this, my Jewish bump from my, <laughs> I'm half, I'm half Jewish. So people have asked me my whole life, even on YouTube, if I've broken my nose and it's like, no, that's just my nose. That's literally just my nose. <laughs> but in real life, I can get away from that on the internet. You never know when it's coming. You never know. You can get a hundred positive comments and you're feeling really good. And then one just tear you down. So. So yeah, I mean, that's the internet for you. And I don't know if it'll ever change. I honestly don't. I don't know if it'll ever change. I don't know if there will ever be a time where it is socially really, truly unacceptable for people to be cruel to others on the internet. I hope that one day it's less socially acceptable. But right now, it seems like, you know, the Jake Pauls of the world are winning, you know? So... But there are also a lot of really good people winning, and you can't focus on the people that are just the the not nice people. There are a lot of really nice people on this list too, and we got to remember that too, that being a good person can also get you a long way. So yeah. All right. I'm going to pop off here. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed chat today. I enjoyed talking with you. Uh, next week is... Oh, next week is middle of the month. So we are going to be back here next Sunday, which is the 18th. And that is going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We're going to be hanging out, talking about makeup. Hopefully you can join us. Hopefully you enjoy chat today. Uh, if you did enjoy chat today, I would really appreciate if you would just hit that thumbs up button real quick. That would super, super duper help me. And if you want to uh, make sure you don't miss live chat, it's it's so much easier to find live chat if you hit the subscribe button. I know YouTube is really good at showing you things on your homepage, but make sure if there's a creator you really like that you do hit that subscribe button because um, if YouTube doesn't show it to you, then at least you can go to your subscription feed and find it easily. You know what I'm saying? So not just my channel, but other channels. If you're not subscribed, do that um, if you really do enjoy the content. Uh, and that way you can make sure that you don't miss anything. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you to everybody who contributed to the conversation and everybody that's contributing down in the comments down below on the replay. I appreciate you. Have a lovely week. Be kind to other people. And uh, I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.